Alright you guys, got another video here for you. Will Microsoft lower the Windows 11 hardware requirements? That's the question I see a lot of people asking all the time in the comments section and I try to answer as many as I can but this video hopefully will answer all your questions. Now Windows 10 will no longer receive support or free software updates starting from 14th of October 2025. Now we know that because that's what's been publicized for so many years. So has Microsoft changed their mind and are they going to change their mind in the foreseeable future about the system requirements for Windows 11? And the short answer to that is no, they're not. They've clearly stated that they are not going to uh, change their mind. And these system requirements here have not changed since they've released them. They've been exactly the same from the first time they released them years ago. So basically, Microsoft have not changed their mind in the last at least three years since they released this system requirements uh, list here. And you can see here the processor needs to be one gigahertz or faster with two or more cores compatible with 64-bit processor or the system on-chip SOC. And then there's also the RAM, which has to be at least four gigabytes and then you've got your storage requirements. This has not changed since their release. System firmware needs to be UEFI, secure boot compatible, and you can check here for more information about that. Let's talk about TPM, which is Trusted Platform Module. It needs to be Trusted Platform Module version 2, which is TPM 2.0 for short. You can read all about it on this article right here. And again, if your PC doesn't support this, it's not going to be able to upgrade to Windows 11 or you're not going to be able to install Windows 11 on that system officially. So there is modules that you can buy for certain motherboards and it also your motherboard will need to have a slot on it which will allow you to put a TPM uh, module on there to be able to upgrade it to TPM 2.0. It will look something like this as you can purchase these very cheaply and if your motherboard does support this and it does have TPM on it and it allows you to upgrade it then you might be able to buy a module and then make it uh, TPM 2.0 compliant for Windows 11 which will then allow you to install Windows 11. But that being said you would still need to uh, make sure that you are uh, reaching all of the other requirements. You can purchase these here on Amazon as well. As you can see, this one is £20. And you can see the AMD Ryzen 5000, 5000G series, 4000G and 4000 series, the Ryzen 3000 and 3000G series, and Ryzen 2000, and also Ryzen 1000 series, Athlon and A series processors will be supported with this particular TPM 2.0 module. And this one is compatible with MSI 4462 and you would need to make sure your motherboard has that TPM module uh, port on the board for it to work properly. But like I said before, it needs to also reach all of these other requirements. For instance, you would need to make sure that you have a UEFI uh, firmware and also secure boot compatible as well and all this other stuff. So now you know that these requirements have not changed uh, since their release and they have not got any plans to change these in the foreseeable future. So if you look at this article here that I talked about the other day, it clearly states here that what Microsoft's intentions are. If you read this part here at the very top of the article, it says when they initially released this, which was uh, the support article was originally published on October 4th, 2021, when Windows 11 was first released to the public. And you can go on and read this. I'm not going to go all the way through this. But basically, it says right here, if you install Windows 11 on a device that does not meet Windows 11 system requirements, Microsoft recommends you roll back to Windows 10 immediately. That was their requirement. They've changed this and upgraded it to make it more firmer and say, this is what we're saying. Don't upgrade that system to Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. It basically says it all right here. And then there's a link for their minimum system requirements. I'll leave a link for this also in the video description. So how far is Microsoft willing to go? Do you think they are going to block Windows updates for Windows 11 for unsupported hardware? 
Who knows? I mean, Microsoft have clearly stated that's what their plan is. They might not enforce it just yet because at the moment you can still get updates on Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, but that's not to say that they won't enforce that later on. How they're going to do it, I really don't know. It's not going to be easy, but they could literally enforce something to stop you uh, getting security updates for that system if you're on unsupported hardware further down the line. They might not be worried about it too much right now, uh, but once Windows 10 ends, there will be millions of computers that will have a tough decision to make. It's all going to come down to whether Microsoft are really going to come down hard on people that have installed Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. I can see that if there's millions and millions of computers that are running Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, I'll think that it will force their hand to actually do something because obviously that would just completely defeat the object of having system requirements if they're not going to stick to them. So let's talk about extended security updates, ESU for short, for Windows 10. Now we know Windows 10 is reaching its end of life in October 14th, 2025. So some people might not know that uh, you know they are offering a one-year deal where you can pay $30 to extend your support for that system. So that would give you at least until you know, October 2026, where you can continue to use Windows 10 and receive security updates and updates from Microsoft on that system, which will buy you another year. But you're going to have to give them $30. Now, the problem with that is Microsoft haven't really committed to anything more than 12 months. So we don't know whether Microsoft are going to extend that for another year after that. So it'll be 2027 or 2028 for another two years, they haven't said any of this. So they're only committed to one year. But if a lot of people do it, it might be lucrative to them to extend it for a longer period after than one year. It might be two years, three years. We'll have to wait and see. And then we don't know whether it's going to be more than $30 for the second year. We just don't know. So what other things can you do? Well, we've talked about this before. Linux is quite frightening to some people, but it's not and it shouldn't be, uh, you know, frightening to you. It is quite easy to install, and it is a very good option for you because you are going to be able to continue to use that computer, and you will receive security updates and other software updates for that operating system. Linux Mint is a really good option for a lot of people. Now, I know it doesn't tick all the boxes for a lot of people because, obviously, if you're a hardcore gamer, unfortunately, it's not... Uh, going to be an option for you but there is options for you for some games on linux but again like i said i'm not going to try and sugarcoat it and make it sound like it's a complete replacement for windows uh, 10 because it's not going to do some of the things that windows can do and it shouldn't do because they're two different operating systems that being said if you're a light user and you want to use it to say watch youtube and you want to do other things like emails and stuff like that and you pay a bit of light gaming then linux might be an option for you pop os is another great option for people that are looking to get their uh, feet wet with linux and again it's not difficult to use as much as what people say on the internet saying it's very difficult you have to use a lot of uh, terminal and stuff like that you have to use the terminal or command prompt in windows as well so it's not as if you're doing all of your work on linux in the terminal but again you might have to do the odd thing in terminal but mainly it's uh, all done for you ubuntu is another option available to you and there's also plenty of other flavors with linux and uh, you know at the end of the day what you have to understand is linux is a completely different operating system to windows and if you've been with uh, you know windows all your life and you've never used another operating system of course it's going to be alien to you just like if you went to Mac OS, it would be completely different to you. Or if you're using an Android phone and you've always used Android phones and you suddenly start using an Apple phone, it's going to be different. And at the end of the day, you're just going to have to uh, you know, adapt to it. Now, Fedora is another option, and there's plenty of other options available. Maybe some Linux users might be nice enough to leave some suggestions in the comment section of this video. Now, I understand that Linux is not going to be for everyone. If you're a hardcore Windows user and you've used Windows all your life, it's going to be hard for you to adapt to an operating system like Linux. 
But again, if you have no option and you want to continue to use that computer, then by all means, give it a go. It, you've got nothing else to lose. But again, if you are a AAA listed gamer and you like to play Fortnite and Valorant and all these other particular types of games, uh, first person shooter games that are not compatible with Linux, then obviously it's not going to be for you. There's quite a lot of software that doesn't work with Linux uh, like it does on Windows, but then they're two different operating systems and that's the reason why. A lot of software companies are not helping the issue with supporting Linux. So unfortunately, for some things like, say, Photoshop and other things like Office uh, Suite, it's not going to work on there. There is other options available to you, and there might be workarounds that you can use. But again, uh, I'm just trying to be as honest as I can. There is going to be some major differences between Windows and Linux, and there should be because they're two different operating systems. But again, if you're in a type jam and you don't have options available to you, like to upgrade to Windows 11 and you want to continue to use your PC, then Linux might be an option for you. So let's quickly recap. The options are to uh, try and find a TPM uh, adapter for your motherboard, or you've got the other option, which is to either extend and keep your Windows 10 operating system and extend the security updates with Microsoft for $30 for another year, or you've got Zero Patch, which you can uh, opt into, which is another paid service. Or you can uh, jump ship and go to, uh, say, Linux. Or you can even uh, try your luck and use Windows 11 on unsupported hardware if that's what you want to do. Now, I've seen groups of people talking about maybe what will happen is if enough people uh, stay on Windows 10, it will force Microsoft's hand to uh, cave in and lower the system requirements. I can tell you right now, Microsoft are not going to cave into that and they are not going to lower the system requirements because people are staying on Windows 10. At the end of the day, when it reaches the end of life, they will just end that operating system and extend it like they've said. And they are not going to change their stance on the TPM 2.0 and a bunch of other settings that they've got in place. It's just not going to happen. They've never done it in their whole history. So I don't see why they're going to start doing it now for older hardware to try and keep that going. They just don't want to support the old hardware anymore, and that's just the way it works. And they wanted to make security changes to uh, the setup the way it is, and they're not going to go back on that. But anyway, with that said, if you're one of those people waiting in the wings, hoping that Microsoft changed their mind, they're not going to. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. I think I've answered all of the questions that I've seen in the comments of previous videos on this topic. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. Have a lovely weekend and I shall catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.